the primary objective of this video is to introduce you to mathematical modeling and its role in engineering problem solving. If you want to solve an engineering problem, we first have to formulate the problem as a mathematical expression in terms of variables, functions, and equations. As an example, if we have a particle that moves along a straight line, its speed is inversely proportional to the square of the distance s it has traveled. We denote s as the distance. Another would be that the first derivative of distance with respect to time is the speed or the velocity. Now, relating it to the statement that the speed is inversely proportional to the square of the distance, the rate of change of distance would be equal to k over the square of the distance s, where k is the constant of proportionality. Now, this mathematical expression would be a good example or a good mathematical expression that best describes the relationship of speed and the distance. This well-known equation is the mathematical expression or model of Newton's second law of motion, which states that time rate of change of momentum of a body is equal to the resultant force acting on it. Dividing m to both sides gives us a is equal to f over n. To illustrate a more complex model of this kind, Newton's second law can be used to determine the terminal velocity of a free-falling body near the Earth's surface. A model for this case can be derived by expressing this acceleration by expressing this acceleration as we'll express this acceleration as the time rate of change of velocity which is dv over dt. Now that becomes dv over dt is equal to f over m. Next, we will express this force in terms of measurable quantities. Now for a free-falling body near the vicinity of the Earth, there are two opposing forces, which is the downward pull of gravity, which is equivalent to m times g. This g is the gravitational constant equal to 9.81 meters per second squared, and the upward force, which is equal to c times v. Now this v is the velocity and this c is the drag coefficient which can be um, defined as a parameter which accounts air resistance. Now therefore, the net force is equivalent to the downward force minus the upward force since our body is falling. So we take downward forces as positive and the upward force as negative. Now, substituting it to our third equation yields dv over dt is equal to mg minus cv over m. This gives us dv over dt is equal to g minus c over m times v, which is a first order linear differential equation. To solve a first order linear differential equation, we need to arrange our differential equation into this standard form. The solution of this first order linear differential equation is this equation, wherein this i as a function of x, wait, this i as a function of x is known as the integrating factor, which is also equivalent to this equation. Now, going back to our differential equation from free-falling object given dv over dt plus c over m times v is equal to g. This is now in standard form, where in p of x, p as a function of x is c over m, and our q as a function of x is the g. Now, since our equation or our expression relates velocity and time, we will now change our y into velocity and x into time. Our integrating factor now is equal to this 
equation. Thus, solving further, we get this velocity as a function of time, the solution of our of this differential equation, the solution of this differential equation is this one. The velocity velocity as a function of time is equal to this to this one. Now solving further, since we need to get a value of this arbitrary constant c sub one. I know I I put an index one because so that we will not be um, confused with this c, which is our drag coefficient. To solve for that arbitrary constant c sub one, we need an initial value. Since our object is at rest, so initially our object is at rest or our falling body is at rest, thus at time t is equal to zero, our velocity is also equal to zero. Now using that initial value, we get zero as the uh, at initially our velocity is equal to zero and our time is equal to zero since this will become one, this will become one. Our arbitrary constant c sub one now becomes negative m over c. So we have now a value of our arbitrary constant c sub one. Thus, our solution is simply equal to v as a function of t is equal to gm over c times the quantity of one minus e blah blah blah. This is now our solution of the differential equation that we had. We will now try to solve analytically the falling parachutist problem given the parameters m, which is the mass, and the drag coefficient c, and also the gravitational constant g. This example is from an example in Chapra and Canale book. The solution gives us inserting the parameters into the equation that we get from answering or from solving analytically the differential equation of a falling parachutist or the falling body near the Earth's surface. By inserting the parameters, we get the values of the velocities at certain time t in seconds. That is using um, two seconds per every calculation of the velocity. So if we want to have a better graph of these data, we need to use cert smaller sizes or smaller steps of the number of seconds. Here in this figure, in this graph that I did, in this graph, I used a step of 0.25 seconds to give a better view or vi better vis visualization of the graph. Now, this terminal velocity, the definition of this terminal velocity is that a certain falling body cannot reach, cannot reach higher and higher velocities because of the drag coefficient or the air resistance which is present in the Earth's at atmosphere. So therefore, an object can only reach its terminal velocity. At time t is equal to infinity, it will never, it will never um, exceed the terminal velocity. So this example is analytic, an analytical solution to the falling parachutist problem using the equation that we solved using calculus methods or strategies in calculus. Now, how about if we want to use the numerical solution of the falling parachutist problem? First, we will try to understand how a numerical solution or numerical method works. Now, in this example, and in this figure, we have a certain graph and we have two points, the initial, the first point, the initial first point and the second 
point, which is denoted by T sub I plus 1. And also, the velocities are also given. Now, take note that the first point, we have a true slope, which is the slope at that point, the true slope at that point. Now, in the second point, connecting the two points, approximately, that is, approximately, that is somewhat equal to the true slope. So we we just take this line here as the approximate slope. That approximate slope is equal to is approximately equal to the first derivative of v with respect to t. So delta delta v over delta t is the slope slope of these two points which is approximately equal to the true slope dv over dt. Now, which is equal to the first, uh, you, you know already how it arrives. Since del delta v is v, the first, the higher value minus the lower value over the higher value minus the lower value. Now, using this, this approximate value of the first derivative of the velocity or the time rate, time rate of change of the velocity into our equation. This was our first equation that we get, which is a differential equation, which is dv over dt is equal to g minus c over m v times t. I mean, v as a function of time. So rearranging the equation gives us this equation. Rearranging the terms give, gives us this equation. Now this method or this approach is some, sometimes called or usually called Euler's method. This is one of the methods of numerical differentiation, which is Euler's method, which we will soon know in more detail. Now using that idea of using that Euler's method, we will solve our falling parachutist problem numerically. So perform the same computation as in example 1.1 using equation 1.6, which is that one that we had arrived or that we have arrived using Euler's method and employing a step size of two seconds. Now going back to step sizes, this is our step size delta t the step that we are going to use or we are going to utilize in our calculation. So initially, the parachutist is at rest. Therefore, ti is equal to zero and the velocity at ti is also equal to zero. Using step size equal to two, that means our t sub i plus one is equal to two seconds. So using this equation, using this equation, we get the second velocity or the second the velocity at second step so this is our second step which is i sub i plus one is the initial the initial velocity and this these terms here times the initial velocity multiplied to the quantity of the second time step minus the initial time which is this is our delta t, correct? Which is the step size. This is the step size of that, that we are going to use or utilize in the calculation. So at v, using two second, at the sec, at second, 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 I mean, at t is equal to two seconds, our velocity is equal to 19.60 meters per second squared. And at t is equal to four, four seconds, our velocity is equal to 32 meters per second. Now, these are the table of values of the velocities using numerical method. So at time t is equal to zero, at time t is equal to two, we have values of the velocities. Using the graph, we get we have a visualization of the exact analytical solution and the approximate numerical solution. Notice that the exact analytical solution and the numerical solution somewhat 
coincides the graph of the analytical solution. Our approximate solution somewhat coincides the analytical solution.